So the terms that we use, there's going to be asymptote, which is a line that the curve gets closer and closer to but never actually touches. We have vertical asymptotes, and these occur at any non-permissible values of the reciprocal function. So like where we had the undefined up here, that's where we're going to wind up with our vertical asymptote. We always state it in terms of x is equal to a, where a would be the non-permissible value. The horizontal asymptote describes the end behavior of a graph for a very large positive and negative values of x, which means that as x approaches infinity or negative infinity. And in this case, it's going to be in the form of y is equal to b is the horizontal asymptote of the function for every b value. So I can state that if I had an original function, y is equal to x. Well, my domain is going to be x where x, e, r. The range is going to be y where y, e, r. The vertical asymptote, well, there is none for this original one. The horizontal asymptote, there is none. There are no asymptotes for my original function. What is the behavior near the non-permissible value? This doesn't apply because there is no non-permissible value. What is the end behavior of this graph? Well, in this case, as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches positive infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, y is also going to shoot off towards negative infinity. And the invariant points are negative 1 and negative 1, and positive 1 and positive 1. For the reciprocal function, I'm going to state that it's going to be x, where x just can't equal 0, where x e r. For the range, y, where y also cannot equal 0, where y e r. What is the value of the vertical asymptote? Well, that's when x is equal to 0. For the horizontal one, well, that's when y is equal to 0. What is the behavior near the non-permissible value, or where x is equal to 0? As x approaches 0 on the positive side, y is going to approach positive infinity. As x, sorry, not a, x approaches 0 on the negative side, y is going to approach negative infinity. What about the end behavior? Well, as x approaches positive infinity, y is going to approach 0 on the positive side. As x approaches negative infinity, y is going to approach 0 on the negative side. And the invariant points are obviously going to be the same between the two because they are invariant. So, for example one, we're given the function, we're going to state the reciprocal, the non-permissible values, and the vertical asymptotes, and the horizontal asymptote. So for the first one, I'm going to state that this is going to be y is equal to 1 over the original function, 2x minus 8. 
the non-permissible value I can solve stating, well, it doesn't work like with our last unit if 2x minus 8 is equal to 0. So if 2x minus 8 equals 0, x would equal 4. Or in this case, x can't equal 4. The vertical asymptote is going to be the same as my non-permissible. And the horizontal asymptote is it can't equal 0. For the second case, y is equal to 1 over x squared minus 3x minus 10. So the non-permissible values, well, if x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0, then I can factor it down and say that x cannot equal negative 2 or 5. The vertical asymptotes occur twice, once at x is equal to negative 2, and once at x is equal to 5, and there's only one horizontal asymptote, y is equal to 0. For the third example, y is equal to 1 over 3x squared plus 2x minus 8, and I can factor down that denominator and solve for if either factor equals 0, which is going to give me x cannot equal either negative 2 or positive 4 over 3. The vertical asymptotes occur at x is equal to negative 2 or x is equal to 4 over 3, which means that the horizontal asymptote is still going to be at 0. And for the last example, if y is equal to 1 over x squared minus 16, then that's going to factor down, and x cannot equal either positive or negative 4. So I'm going to state that the vertical asymptotes will happen at x equals negative 4 or x equals positive 4, and y still can't equal 0.